Welcome back to New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. World government wants a world military. We got that story plus J.P. Morgan for president. But first, the story you perhaps have already seen. Bear Monsanto deal makes new ag monstrosity. Monsanto company agreed finally, third time was the charm, to sell itself to Bayer AG in a $66 billion deal that would forge a new agricultural force and end the independence of one of the most successful and controversial U.S. companies. This has come from the Wall Street Journal. If regulators approve, and that seems to be they're floating that as a question, I seem, I, I, I'm, I'm more doubtful. It seems like a foregone conclusion to me. The German pharmaceutical and chemical conglomerate would add Monsanto's world-leading position in seeds and crop genes, heavily tilting Bayer towards agriculture in a blah, blah, blah. This is bad news, and this is deep decades, decades, decades long corruption. So I talked about this on the morning show called it Bear Eats Monsanto and We Get Sick. And I'll also include James in the show notes. I've got Monsanto stories going back on the website to all the way back to 2007. And our second episode of New World Next Week, October 15th, 2009, you and I were asking the question, why are Monsanto insiders now appointed to protect food safety? And I don't actually recommend anyone watching that old episode, James. I was a little, I kind of cringed at it when I watched it a little bit. I'll also include something from Barbara Peterson at Farm Wars. The Codex Fluoride Auschwitz Monsanto connection is insane as that may sound. This goes deep and the tentacles go all to the heart of, of deep politics. But it's also not like these companies, again, haven't been working together a ton. BASF, Crop Science, Cargill. I've mostly maintained, James, this is kind of my take on it, that what's going to happen is the most hated company of the last 10 years is just going to disappear from people's minds, kind of like Blackwater turned into Z, turned into Academy, and kind of disappeared in some way. What do you think this means? I think you're right about that. I think that's one of the aspects of what's going on here. And they're going to try to, you know, shunt it off into some some new name, but of course, doing all the old stuff. I think the other thing that we're seeing here is the consolidation of what they're now calling the agrochemical products industry. Um, we saw the consolidation of the seed companies in the hand of a few seed cartels, um, basically controlling all of the, the the, the essentials of, you know, growing, growing crops. We've saw that over the past couple of decades, and that's been talked about and warned about by researchers like William Engdahl and others for a long time. But now we're seeing the next stage of that consolidation. Now those consolidated seed cartels are, all, are merging with the agrochemical products manufacturers and creating, you know, bigger and bigger cartels. And I think the end result of this ultimately is going to be maybe, a, you know, a handful, maybe three or four competing uh, businesses that will basically offer everything. They'll offer you your genetically modified seed and your genetically modified, you know, uh, Roundup to to uh, to spray on your GM crops, and it'll all be this this self-contained ecosystem that a few companies will control. And of course, those few companies are about as different as Pepsi and Coke. At the end of the day, that will be your choices. And that's certainly the the, the long-term plan is to consolidate the food supply itself in the hands of the very few oligarchs. And this goes directly back to what I was talking about in How Big Oil Conquered the World, because of course Bear is an offshoot of IG Farben, which itself was absolutely tied into that oil oligarchy and had the Rockefeller Rothschild connections and the European royalty connections, all of the main oil oligarch players there in, in a company like Bear, uh, offshoot of IG Farben, now merging with Monsanto, what, you know, match made in hell. So uh, it's obviously huge news. Um, it's huge news in every level. I mean, in terms of the industry and the, the standard it's uh, going to set if and when it's approved. I'm expecting it will be approved. Um, and uh, also in terms of the ramifications for the future of food. Mm. Pretty, pretty dour and, and dire. And I think it's interesting. Again, there's a lot of, it, it seems movements and consolidations and rats, if not necessarily j jumping ship, but moving to different compartments of the ship. It was also announced today Ford is shifting all their U.S. small car production to Mexico. So again, another sort of economic situation as everyone gets strangled. Our second story on this New World Next Week, episode 283 for September 15th, 2016. J.P. Morgan Chase Chief says he'd love to be president. But the rigors of running are too great. Quote, it's just 
too hard and too late, end quote, said Mr. Diamond, 60 years old, speaking at a lunch hosted by the Economic Club of Washington, D.C. It's why Michael Bloomberg would be eminently qualified but didn't do it. Mr. Diamond also demurred on the possibility of becoming Treasury Secretary in a future administration, referring at one point to, quote, Democratic Republican bullshit, end quote. In that interview, Mr. Diamond noted that most of the people who have run in the past 30 years have been running their whole lives. So in some ways, it's not like he's dropping truth bombs here, but speaking somewhat off the cuff because it's in a friendly kind of place. And as we kind of wait to see what the Fed's going to do with interest rates, James, I, when we see stories like this, we almost have to ask, what difference does it make if we did just straight up have President J.P. Morgan? Yeah, well, I think the banking oligarchy is decloaking at the at the moment. They don't care anymore even to try to attempt to hide the amount of control they wield. And I think a related... A mirror image to that story is the one uh, that we have here for a related EU launches ethics probes into Barroso over Goldman job. Yes, the uh, ex-EU president uh, taking the golden parachute into Goldman Sachs to advise them about Brexit. Um, And now the EU is launching, you know, an ethics probe investigation into what his role is going to be there and whether it's basically just lobbying. But... Come on. I mean, this is the same EU that parachuted Mario Monti, Goldman Sachs Bilderberger, into uh, the president of Italy back a few years ago. So, um, I mean, it's just there is no difference now between the banking oligarchy and the ostensible government, the the ostensible rulers of the country. uh, And there hasn't been for a long time. It's all the same banking slash Bilderberg clique. And I think you're right. I mean, what difference does it ultimately make, if anything? It might be a step down for someone like Diamond. Um, it's the old joke about David Rockefeller. Why didn't you ever run for pre- president? Uh, I don't want to take a demotion. Mm. So that story, the EU ethics probe, will segue well into our third and final story, James. But I think just here as we're talking about America's next top president, I want to put you on the spot and ask you, sidebar, Things have taken a turn for the strange here in uh, America's next top president. Have you? It's not the 9/11 anniversary I think that we expected. And I don't know if you've talked about or said anything about Hillary and the election and 9/11 on Sunday and any of that. Do you have any thoughts that you'd share right here? Yeah, I just put out a video asking people why the media is gaslighting the public so in such a ridiculous fashion right now because clearly they're saying oh she wobbled she stumbled no she she was literally dragged seemingly unconscious into a van i mean that's not a wobble or stumble i mean everyone can see the lies right now so that's that's kind of where where i'm at i mean the media is just on another level of uh, of propaganda at the moment um but I, I don't know. I, this, this is such a crazy selection cycle and anything can happen. And I want to say, well, the best that we could hope for is that maybe she'll croak before she even gets into office. But I'm not sure that would even be the best thing because then, you know, who's the backup and what's what's the plan B? Because plan B can even be worse than plan A. I don't know. So it's going to be interesting to watch how this plays out anyway. That's yeah. Stay tuned to America's next top president. So as I noted, the EU ethics probe hit the headlines at the same time that the now head of the EU was given his big State of the EU talk. And so if you start to dig through some of the headlines around the story I'm about to present to you, you'll find the other thing saying ethics probe casts, you know, dark shadow on Junker's big speech he gave, where he, among a plethora of other things, proposes an EU military headquarters. This from... The Beeb, the European Union, needs a military headquarters to work towards a common military force, the commission president told MEPs in Strasbourg today. Jean-Claude Juncker said the lack of a permanent structure resulted in money, money being wasted on missions. Part of his annual State of the Union address was devoted to the UK's unexpected vote to leave the EU. He insisted that the bloc was not at risk, but called for Brexit negotiations to yada yada. Modeled on the State of the Union address by the U.S. president... The commission president's annual speech was introduced in 2010 to detail the state of the EU and future legislative plans. So that was all. You'll find that now all over the headlines today, and you'll see it on both sides. You'll see it from the left to the right. World government. The interesting part, James, when I dug just 
slightly deeper, altered my search just a little bit, and found the Financial Times a week ago saying exactly what was about to happen. Brussels to push for closer EU military unity post-Brexit, September 7th. Brussels is advancing an ambitious plan to bolster EU military coordination as European leaders seek to rally the bloc after Britain's vote to leave. Mr. Junker's address to the European Parliament in Strasbourg comes two days before he presents his proposals to the leaders of the 27 remaining EU countries at a special post-Brexit summit in Bratislava. So another great example, I think, it's one of those teaching moments of if you look at sort of the elite mouthpieces, they're already talking about the things that will later turn into big announcements when the front guy comes out and says this stuff that they already kind of decided before, James. Exactly right. And I'll go you one better. It wasn't just a week ago. It was last November that uh, I noted in the wake of the Paris uh, attacks, whatever that was, the uh, the new calls for EU army in wake of Paris terror attacks. And uh, yeah, it was y- Juncker coming out at that time saying we need a we need an EU standing army. Um, so they're going to use this these staged and manipulated terror attacks in order to, you know, oh, Europe is under siege. We have to protect Europe. Well, what's the best way to do it? The EU needs to create a standing army. And so now they're rolling out the pieces of that because, of course, you don't go from zero to 60 and, you know, in, in three seconds, you, you build it up. You build up the infrastructure and this is the first step. Well, we need a military headquarters to consolidate and have a place. And then you start building that up. So it's a process. It's it's underway right now. We know the logic of where this is heading. We know more st- staged and manipulated terror attacks will happen between now and then to increase the, the, the frenzy among the public and keep them whipped up in this uh, st- siege mentality that allows France to suspend the Constitution and whatever else. And, uh, and this is the way the cookie is crumbling. Uh, is there anything that can derail it? Will Brexit derail it? Well, it hasn't so far, but uh, but maybe if that type of movement catches on. Again, my, my 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 thoughts and prayers go to the people of the EU as they as they face this uh, this just nightmarish vision of uh, regional government that's uh, that's taking place right now, and it's it's the canary in the coal mine for so many different uh, agendas that are going on right now. And how how far behind is the North American Union? One has to wonder. Well, and that's the the shadow of it's so easy for Ford. One of the big major companies. And again, that's, I think, why it's important that we kind of that we'll look at these big monolithic, you know, hundred year long companies. Of course, they're going to be quite entrenched that in some ways it can be pretty simple that Ford will go, oh, yeah, we're moving all our stuff to Mexico. Not a blip. No big deal. So it, the shadow of that North American Union kind of hides right there. And as things seem to fall apart more, it seems to lead that way. But again, it's the little kind of little tiny steps along the way. So uh, it's Junker. That's my, my Americanese coming out saying Junker. Junker just sounds, it's so much more fun to say. It, it makes it, it's fun. more appropriate anyway. It Let's is more it appropriate. <laughs> so uh, in conclusion, world government wants world military. Banksters want to be America's next top president and chemical companies want to make your food. How about some good news? Just to close out the latest episode of Good News next week, the spinoff from this series. You might remember all through 2015, we featured a good news story on every episode of New World Next Week. We haven't been bringing the good news so much right here, but I do my best each week to do a Good News Next Week episode and try and highlight some of the ways that we are winning. This most recent episode being drumming out depression, creative sarcasm, and nature therapy. James? Well, we need some good news after this uh, particular episode, so I hope people will go directly from this to Good News next week. The link again in the show notes, as with all, the link to all of these different stories. James, 